Seriously? Welcome to Firearms of America. Today I have uh, something a little bit different for you guys. It's not exactly gun review or gun comparison, but we are still talking about guns. Specifically the guns that I reviewed on this channel. All the guns of all the guns that I reviewed on this channel. What were the worst guns that I reviewed? And I actually have a list. And believe it or not, knowing how much I love firearms and how excited I get about firearms the list is pretty big now some of the reasons are really personal more than the gun itself some of the things I messed up but nevertheless they're all here so let's get into the very first one the worst gun that was featured on this channel Ruger SR9 let me tell you guys especially Ruger fans which I'm in in that my main arm right there is sitting there Ruger PC charger so I, I love Ruger firearm and don't get me wrong the SR9 is actually a very very good gun it's, it's a quality gun but it was my very first gun and for whatever reason that specific handgun has the toughest slide like literally of everything I've shot and I've shot hundreds of handguns literally the toughest slide to freaking rack this happened to be on on sr9 and that sr9 happened to be my very first handgun so you can imagine that the very first gun i had take in my hand i bought my first handgun when i was like 25 when i was already here in the united states i just literally got my green card so i was a, had an ability to go buy a gun so had no idea what guns how what whatever so i went to the store they're like oh yeah this is a good gun so i ended up buying it. and actually you know what the funny thing is i reviewed that ruger twice that ruger sr9 i reviewed twice on my channel because of no actually you know what i think i did it three times three times i reviewed the first one it was like very very basic just on the table the second one i actually had some shooting in it and then the third one i actually did already updated with a normal camera i i think i, I think it might have still been gopro and all three times the only handgun that ever freaking pinched my hand when you rack it the only ever handgun was ruger sr9 and every single time i reviewed it for whatever reason i freaking was pinching my hand in it i don't know why it never happened to any other gun that's why it is on this list okay so another second although the whatever doesn't matter number which one goes it doesn't matter another worst gun that i shot on this channel Caltech. That little freaking 380 thing. P380. Okay, Keltec P380. Now, I don't know, for whatever reason, that little freaking has its own fan base. Like, literally, there's a group of people. I'm not gonna get into the detail and try to imagine what, how these people look and what they do for a living or for their hobbies. It has that little group of people that swear by that stupid Keltec P380. And it literally tries to blow your hand arm out of your freaking hand arm whatever whichever i don't get confused this is i think hand the whole thing is an arm if i'm correct if not correct whatever i'm an immigrant <laughs> yes and it hurt it really hurts your palm i don't know maybe i do have sensitive hands i don't know i i did freaking break dancing on the concrete for for you know for a living for two years maybe i have sensitive hands but Okay, let's move on to another thing that was really freaking destroying my hand is a freaking double tap. That little thing that was opening up, I thought that was the coolest thing. It was super slim, it was super small, and basically it was a derringer. It's a derringer. So it opens up, it flips open, you put in two rounds, 9mm, stick it in, you close it, that's it. This, the trigger is double action with an internal hammer, so you just, it's super slim. So you just like freaking wallet in your pocket and you go i thought it was the coolest freaking thing and i was like why are these guys not like huge why once i shot it the first time i shot it i, I think like my palm like started freaking like it, it really got destroyed i was like oh i see okay it makes sense that's why <laughs> it's not popular moving on another caltech on the list unfortunately Keltec, I don't know why you're on the list this is the second time. No, nothing against you guys. Plus, you're here in Florida. You're my neighbors. Why are you not answering my emails, by the way? Keltec CP33. That thing was jamming. 
I mean, and it's, I, I still have it. it. It's actually sitting in my uh, gun display in my living room. It's still there. I still love it. It's, it's so much fun to shoot. It's just freaking great. And you can freaking rapid fire the hell out of it. And it's great. When you get that freaking round on the chamber. And every time you freaking rack it, it just gets stuck. It gets stuck. And I tried already so many different things. All of the suggestion comments on the video went to different forums. I tried like different way of loading the magazine try different ammo, different whatever, and I, I don't know. It's still freaking doing that. I still love it, it's great, it's fantastic. I put a little red dot on it, it's great, but whatever. Anyway, another gun that is I loved, but I just couldn't freaking end it up on this list, SVI Infinity. And really it goes for every single 1911 handgun that I reviewed on this channel. I absolutely love 1911, especially SVI Infinity. I mean, that is, that. although it was 2011, but again, really, 2011 is just, a 1911 with more capacity, the double stack mag. It's fantastic, everything is beautiful about it. But for whatever reason, 1911s, they just don't fit my hand and every time I shoot it, it just destroys this knuckle on the thumb, I guess, that's what it is. I don't know, whatever it is, but it just freaking destroys it. So, yes, and SVI Infinity was actually the, the one that did it the most. I don't know, maybe because of the 2011 grip, uh, because now it's even wider, so now I have even more. Maybe because the ammo that I was shooting, it was hotter ammo because it's a competition ha handgun. So I was shooting that competition ammo that is a little bit of a hotter round. I don't know, it was just freaking destroying my hand. Okay, moving on. Uh, Smith & Wesson 386SC Mountain Light. Now that was a little revolver, super light. When I picked it up, I was like, wow, this is fantastic. This is like gonna be great. No, so 357 SIG, I think. 357 SIG or was a Magnum? I don't know whatever it was, but whenever I was shooting, it was kicking so freaking hard. I think that was one of the like craziest recoils that I like ever experienced in my life in the handgun. It was just ridiculous. I don't know, maybe the ammo was like super hot too, but I don't know. It was just kicking like crazy and I'm thinking the reason because it was air light. Not a good idea for a revolver. Next one, it was the 1979 Smith & Wesson revolver. Yes, the one that I have, the one that I really got lucky getting. So the reason why it is on this list is because it's like, it shot me with a fragment or whatever, whenever I do, was doing it stupid. You see, you do stupid things, stupid things happen to you. This is like the truth. This is me an example. Uh, whenever I was doing that freaking stupid cowboy video, trying to shoot off the hip. The very first I've shot off the hip, well, first of all, it freaking got me deaf because I shot without the things because I'm like, okay, cowboys do it without the earplugs, so why I'm, I'll try to do it without earplugs? And I did it and it was bad idea, really bad idea. That first round that I've shot, took it out, shot it, and this was kind of like hanging crooked, I don't know, whatever. And I feel, I feel burning in my forearm. So while I'm speaking on camera, well, that kind of looks fine. There's like a few red dots, not nothing crazy. I was like, okay, whatever. Maybe it was the primer or something. Day later, two days later, three days later, four days later, like this red spots, they, they're not healing. It just doesn't heal and it hurts. Strangely, it kind of hurts. Like there's something in there that's not supposed to be there. Almost freaking week later, I finally am like, messing with it and I'm looking at it and I'm just, there's something there that's not supposed to be there. And sure enough, took the freaking pliers or whatever the hell, took it out, freaking piece of fragment though, I don't know, whatever, bullet casing, whatever it is, <laughs> revolvers. Shooting off the hip is no joke, like cowboy is like tough guy, serious business. Anyway, Beretta Tomcat. <laughs> the reason why it is on this list, this Beretta Tomcat, is <laughs> great gun, don't get me wrong, but the whole review, I was doing that review and I was like, Try to justify like, I was like, yeah, like, why wouldn't you want to buy it? And then I was like, who the hell would buy this? Literally the only use for this Beretta Tomcat is to put it like in one of them like sexy thigh straps in between women, like good looking woman thigh and like put it in the movie and when she's like taking it out of the dress, like it always happens in every single, for whatever reason, Fast and Furious, James Bond, everywhere there's like, that's it. Literally the only reason. And then I see guys commenting on this. Oh, it's a great gun. Yeah, I love this gun. It was my first choice. Man, this Beretta Tomcat makes me feel so manly. No, they don't say that. Yeah, commenting, they're like, that's oh, a good gun. And I'm like, well, I guess it's a popular, whatever. Walther P... <laughs> Walther P22. Yeah, Walther P22 because it was pink. Browning 1911. Man, black label. Black label. Man, I love that freaking gun. 
It's literally the sexiest gun that I reviewed on my channel. But it's also the most useless. It's kind of like the sexiest Instagram model. Well, I can find use for it. Anyway, it's so beautiful. It's so perfect. It's like a mini, like a, it kind of like a, imagine like a full size 1911 and a six hour P238 had a baby, right? But then it's like the middle son, all right? The teenager. That's, that's the 1911 from Browning, the black label. It's fantastic. Like if you haven't, if you haven't seen one, try to find it in your local gun store. And if you find it, they're pretty pop popular. Like, they were one of the only things that were for sale. Whenever all the guns were not for sale at the wholesalers, that was like one of the only guns that was available for sale because nobody wanted it. So a bunch of stores just bought them and they're just sitting there because nobody wants them because there's no freaking use for them. It's the sexiest gun that you can ever like hold in your hand. Taurus Spectrum. I still have a problem with that freaking trigger. I was going through the comments because I'm actually going to do another video like that on the most hilarious comments that I got on this channel. And believe me, like you guys, sometimes you just freaking on point. All right. I, I read them and I'm like, man, I wish I thought of that and say it in, in the review. The Toro Spectrum video. There's so many comments, just people just laughing at how I was triggered by the trigger. And I literally am still triggered about that freaking trigger. I still remember how mushy that freaking trigger was. Imagine like the mushy thing, right? Something very mushy. And imagine it's like the mushiest things out of that. Probably even more mushy. It's a freaking the most unpredictable trigger. And then people come up there and they're like justifying it because like, oh, you just smash the trigger, which is another thing that triggers me. Freaking smashing the trigger. No, you're not just smashing the trigger. It's a process or the process of breaking the trigger. It's a delicate process. You don't just smash the trigger. Six hour P238 on this list. Yes, I was just talking about it. I love that gun. The reason why it is on this list is because I did several times review on it too, because it was, I had that gun. It was my, one of my own guns. I didn't have to like find a way to find guns to review on this channel. Trying to secretly review the guns of my like ex-girlfriend's dad. Anyway, and that freaking P238, I had it. It was my personal concealed carry gun, my first concealed carry gun well no actually the SR22 was but anyway I had it for a while and I carried it for a while and then I review it and on the first shot I think that thing freaking jams and I'm like thinking to myself like you little freaking I carried you I'm right now here presenting you like with love and you freaking do this to me and then I was like literally literally that same day I had like a I found because I was trying to find guns and just buy guns so that I could review them. And that day I bought like five or six different Glocks in like a local pawn shop. One of them was Glock 42 and that's it. I was like, okay, you are now my concealed carry gun. And at the, right there after that review, I replaced it with a Glock 42. So yeah, pretty, pretty crazy. Okay, the next one on the list is also six hour. It's six hour P365 SAS. SAS stands for suck at shooting literally that freaking sight was the worst thing i ever <laughs> experienced in my life that sight i could not hit a target for anything it was so bad i couldn't even understand where i was shooting i would shoot and like there wouldn't be a shot on the target anywhere within like reachable radius i'm looking like where is it going and, I, and I'm, I'm not seeing anything bouncing off the ground. I'm not seeing anything bouncing on the ceiling. So it goes either left or right somewhere. Nowhere on the painted target. Because when you have like a fresh painted target, you shoot it anywhere you hit it, you will definitely see it. Like you can't miss it. And I couldn't see it. I, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to shoot it. And then I gave it to Mr. Cody. I was like, Mr. Cody, I don't know how to hit the target. He's like, nah, you just don't know what you're doing. So, so he went and tried to shoot and he didn't get any signal. Like he, he couldn't figure out where is he shooting. So yeah, it's really bad. I don't know what it is. It's really freaking bad. PC365, excellent gun, but not SAS. Stay away from SAS. Okay, so the next on the list is the Armalite AR-10A. Yes, the big freaking AR-10 with a freaking 308, chambered in 308. The reason why it is on this list <laughs> is because I forgot to put ear protection off and that freaking made me deaf for like a like few days. And for like two weeks after that, my ears was just constantly ringing, like non-stop. I think I got lucky that my eardrum was blown <laughs> because it was that close. That thing is insanely loud. And it was so sad too, because it was my very first shot. It was my very first big rifle like that on this channel, semi-automatic AR-10. I mean, I was so excited. 
and it, I was in a cool location too. It was my friend's house. Plenty of space. Do whatever you want. No rules. Weird. Uh, don't look. Don't do this. Don't do that. And we had watermelons to explore. I mean, I was like, man, all right, I got my cowboy head. Let's do it. And I, I really do want to look like I'm so happy, but my <laughs> ears hurt so bad. So yeah, that's why it's here. Beretta 92 FS is on this list. Beretta 92 FS. I tell you, I really do need to do another review. If you guys can lend me a Beretta 92 FS, I need to justify that freaking horrible video that I did. Because literally every round was jamming with every single possible ammo that we had in the store. I was like, and I kept, it just kept freaking jamming, non-stop. I showed to Mr. Cody, he checked it out. He was like, everything was good. We tried to lubricate it afterwards and again and again, cause I was like, it has to be the gun. So I don't know, I think it really was a gun, but that again, just shows Italian Ferrari. Okay, broke on the first ride. So beautiful to look at, but it broke on the first ride. Very sad. CZ75TO. It's on this list. The reason why it's on this list is because it literally ruined for me every single handgun ever I shot after that CZ75 uh, or because of the gas pedal. I fell in love with that gas pedal so much I couldn't look or hold any other gun the same. I was like there is no gas pedal. Finally I was able to help myself with the stippling and when you stipple that part on your Glock, right there, that where your thumb of left arm is resting. If you stipple that, it's the closest thing that I've seen to get to an actual normal gas pedal normal. Like on CZ, obviously not as gonna be as effective, but still, because it's so grippy, it's so aggressive, your thumb catches onto it and it does a pretty good job. Nothing close. I mean, if you never shot that and you don't wanna ruin every handgun for yourself, stay away from it, don't freaking shoot it. And the other reason why it's on this list is because it's orange. Another gun on this list, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to make fun of these guys. Like that, that's what they're supposed to do. Like that's their business idea. But I still have to say, High Point 45. I still can't forget the freaking cast iron that they had for a slide. It's like the kind of gun that you don't even need to shoot it. You know, you can just freaking smash somebody on the head. You don't have to worry. Just throw it. Throw it and it will be like a freaking grenade because it's so freaking heavy and it's this freaking piece of cast iron is just no reliability. I have not had a single problem. Although that one that I was reviewing, I didn't even have a chance like to shoot during the video because it was just a freaking table. Back. They're super cheap, they're reliable, and they have a cast iron for a slide. Next gun, actually, same day that I reviewed it, it was their Phoenix Arms HP 25A. I don't even know. I I could not figure out how to. I think it was wreck, to wreck the slide or, or close the slide, to the slide back, something like that. I couldn't figure out for like half an hour. The very, very last handgun on this list. I know you're going to be surprised because you know my unhealthy obsession with Glock. The last gun on this list is that Glock, that small, I think it was Glock 26. It was chambered 9mm, it was little tiny, it's the smallest 9mm, not slim line, but the normal big square freaking slide today. That was the only Glock, literally the only Glock that had problems because of Glock. Yes, it was defective, it just came defective from the factory. When we sent it back, it was fixed or I, I think they just replaced it, they sent us a new thing was running like butter without any problem, but still. Glock perfection is a Glock perfection, all right? You can't freaking take that away. If you send a defective gun, you send a defective gun. So it was heartbreaking for me. Really freaking heartbreaking. Because I was the only... I had problems before with uh, Glocks, but it wasn't because of a Glock. It was one time we had a Glock uh, 17 issue. It would jam occasionally. And then we figured that it was the magazine. Once we put the um, stock OEM magazines back, not a single problem. But it was... I'm not going to say the brand of magazine. Really, every single aftermarket magazine, I would... Try to stay away. Try to stay away. But I think there's no purpose. But anyway, this one is for another discussion. So let me know, guys, in the comments below. What do you think about this list of guns? Which one would you add to this list uh, from your experience? If you enjoyed the video, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. And your input always appreciated and is always helpful. Thank you, guys, for watching. See you in another video.